through our CBTC portal. Um, we're literally going to do kind of the beginning class. So some of you that maybe have already had some touch on a little bit of experience on what we've done anyway, and I'm going to really kind of take it from the basics as we're videoing this, and we're going to shoot this out to some of the other offices, of course. So, um, um, first of all, as a matter of fact, let's do a Google search first. I'm curious if we've got any any ranking with Google yet, because as we start to use this, I'm hoping if you, someone wants to do a Google search on the CBTC portal, we'll actually start to get what we want to do. So let's see what happens if you search TC. CBTC portal, and right now we still have nothing. My thought is going to be is that is going to change. Um, unfortunately, one of the problems with CBTC is there is a community bank, something or other like that. But at any rate, um, if you type in into your browser www.cbtcportal.com. That will take you to our portal. Okay, you should get a login screen. One of the things we've been a little schizophrenic about when it comes to calling, naming this, is if you look up top, you see, you know, COL 725 Connect, Global Wolf Web, yada yada yada. <coughs> Over here, you see Lone Wolf Wolf Connect. Unfortunately, the way they brand this product, the vendor, the name of the company is Lone Wolf, and they've got all these products called Lone Wolf and Broken Wolf and Wolf Connect. So when we were starting to announce this to our agents, we, you might have heard us say Broken Wolf, you might have heard us say Wolf Connect, um, and then we said, well, time out. Let's not call it that. Let's call it the portal or the CBTC portal. Unfortunately, we got so accustomed to calling it Wolf Connect or Broker Wolf or whatever, now half the time when I introduce the damn thing, I say, I don't introduce it as the portal. So hopefully over time, we will, um, and actually I wish they would just take that off. What I want them to put there is Cobalt Banker Portal or CBTC Portal. But at any rate, so if you hear us say the portal, this is what we're talking about. Um, the gist of this is a program that We've attempted to do this, honestly, for a very long time, and we haven't, you know, frankly, we've, we've done a poor job at it. But what we've attempted to do is to have an intranet site for us to go to access private office information, okay? This is not public, even though it's on the web. I mean, if, if someone has your username and password, then, of course, it's public. But this is designed, basically, to communicate from the management and ownership level, down to the managers, down to the agents, and then back up, okay? So, um, everybody, is, everybody in here have a username and password already? Okay, if, if, very good. If you do not have a username and password, um, frankly, the person you want to communicate with is, is Stacy, um, which, by the way, in case not that this is really the appropriate place to have this conversation, but Stacy is um, our new office manager. Anna is still within the office. She's got a new role within property management. But Stacy Daniel, who most of you at least have seen, if you don't know her, um, she was working in property management. She is the new Anna, if you will. Um, so. At any rate, but if you don't have a username and password, you can shoot an email to either to me or to Stacy Daniel, and we'll get you one. Now, this is um, this is a goofy picture of me at some music festival. That's probably not the best picture that I would want on here. <coughs> right now, what what the goal is going to be, and you're going to hear me say this a lot, and hopefully, when I say the goal is. That means within 30 to 60 to 90 days, not five years from now. But the goal is when, if I wanted to change my profile picture for the portal, that would also flow. By the way, I'm going to grab a, let me grab a pen here. I'll give you guys a little bit of a timeline on where this stuff goes to. Okay. One of the things that this is designed to do is to communicate with some of our other with some of our other um, platforms out there. So we've got our CBTC portal. Okay, which obviously we're going to go do some training here. I'm talking about changing a photograph. 
one of the things that the CBTC portal flows to, it flows to the MLS, okay? It also flows to our back office software program, which is Broker Wolf. You guys obviously have access to the MLS, but you, of course you don't have access to Broker Wolf. That's the back office software. That's what myself and all the managers log into. But it also flows to the Cobalt Banker corporate site, and it also um, flows to CobaltBanker.com. Okay, so the reason I put this flow chart up for you isn't so much that you really need to know this. There's really two pieces of this that you need to know. The CBTC portal will talk to the MLS. Okay, so in other words, if you take a listing and you put it into the MLS, that listing information, matter of fact, let me in here. Um, that listing information will flow in here and it will be available for you to see. So we're going to get to it in a minute, but when you go up to um, resources up at the top and you want to say, I'm going to take a look at my listings, well, whatever listings that you have that you reported to the MLS should actually be here without you doing anything. Okay? Um, and now the reason I like that is because if you take a listing, we also, I'm going to put Sky Slope over here somewhere. One of our challenges from the back office standpoint is to get everybody to use Sky Slope. <coughs> Matter of fact, yesterday, yesterday, tomorrow is our sales meeting. One of the things that we would like to do a better job of in 2014 is recognizing our top listing agents and our top sales agents. One of the things that we've had a challenge in the past, and it's all our fault on the management side, but if if we don't, if we look in Sky Slope or we look in our back office software to find out, hey, who's my top listing agent for January 2014? We've been completely dependent upon the agents who took the listing to make sure they get it into Sky Slope. And if the agent hadn't done that, then I was, oops, I don't, I'm not giving you proper credit. One of the things that this program will do, because again, it talks to the MLS, it's going to help us do a better job, and you for that matter, of seeing what you actually have within the MLS and it is accurate, and that information is going to flow. Now, I was talking about the picture, getting back to the picture, this is what the plan is. This isn't the way it works right now. That picture is not the professional picture I'm looking for if I was wanted to portray myself out to the public. Keep in mind right now, this is not public. However, you guys could see this. If you wanted to send a note to Lance or see me, that would be the picture that you would get of me. Not so sure that's the, the picture I want to portray. But this is how this is going to work, is I change my picture and I now put my professional button-down suit and tie picture on. That picture gets changed, and again, forget about this stuff, but from your guys' perspective, that picture will then flow straight down to couplebanker.com, and that's the public site. Shirley and I had a conversation less than an hour ago, sometime in the last day or two. Mm -hmm. Shirley got a referral from a couple banker agent in Dallas, yes. and they found Shirley on couplebanker.com. Okay, so anyway, the, 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 the idea is, is if you make a change here for your profile information, maybe you change your cell phone <coughs> number, or you want to update your website, or you want to update your picture, you, by the way, you guys can do that. You can go directly to cobaltbanker.com right now and do that. But the idea is, is you'll be able to do it here. So, anyway, kind of got hung up on the picture there for a little bit. But you can change that. But there is some communication here. And I'll get back to this little chart here in a minute to show you why that could be important for us. Okay, so I'm going to go through just kind of what's on the home page first. And then we're going to go through the real estate communications, membership, contact management, e-concierge, and resources. And by the way, if anybody got any questions, because I know a few of you, I know Michael's been working on some stuff in the contact management database, and a few of you guys have. have it, it, other than Michael, has anybody really spent any time in here at all? Okay, a few of you. All right, good, good. My goal, you can't find stuff. Good comment. Um, and I've been full disclosure, even though I'd like to think we're not in the beta testing phase. Reality is we're probably still in the beta testing phase. You can't find stuff up until a day ago. You couldn't even send a letter. There is some issues with this. To be blunt, the program wasn't quite ready for prime time when we first launched it. Because I started talking about this in September, if you guys recall. 
it's really probably only been in the last 30 days that the product is really starting to be available. But this, this is my goal. My goal is, is to hopefully, we've got 70 people in the room here, um, and God knows how many people are going to watch the video, but we've got 200 plus agents in the office. My goal is, is that there's going to be something within this product that will prompt you guys to go visit this program periodically. So let's just say, for example, we've got 10 items on the menu. I'm hoping that at least one of those 10 you will find some value in. And you may find zero value in the other nine, but I'm hoping there's at least one that says, ah, okay, this is value to me. And then depending upon what that item is, well, how often will you visit? Ideally, if you're using the contact management system, for example, you may be living in this program. You may be in this program all day, multiple times a day. Okay. Yeah. I've started using that, and it, it's pretty good. I'm learning it. Good. And it's you know, but I've started using. <clears throat> well, there you go. We have a testimony. Okay. So, so I've got one. I already got Dwayne. So, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, four, six, eight. Okay. So, by the end of the day, I need to have eight little sticks up here. Okay. So, I've got one. Dwayne says, "Hey, I'm finding value in the contact management, and I'm using it, and it's working. All right. Um, we'll talk more about contact management." The one thing, and this could be viewed as a positive or a negative, I'm going to present it as a positive. The one thing that's nice about this contact management system is it is a very basic and simple contact management system. Which frankly, for most of everybody in this office, that's all you need. You know, we keep talking gold mine, gold mine, gold mine. Well, gold mine is, is not a basic, simple contact management system. For me it is, because I've been using it for so long. But my experience is when I try to get people into it, they, they, they get lost in it. It's just too much, whatever. This is a basic system. Um, who am I, who's, in my, who's in my sphere of influence? What's their contact information? When am I supposed to call them back next? And are they on my calendar? And can I send them a letter, send an email campaign? So the contact management system is one thing. We're going to get to that in a minute. So within, I'm just going to kind of give you the introductory. You'll notice, by, does anybody have this log into this right now? Yeah. Do you guys have the same office and home buttons over here? Tabs? I, I, I just have office. I just have office. office. Okay. Right now, the, uh, and does your office look pretty similar to what we have here? No. Okay. When, one of the things that we need to work on on our side, matter of fact, I'm... I wonder if I should get this. Yeah, mine looks similar. Looks similar. Yeah. Well, you guys can tweak a little bit. Office. You got all kinds of extra stuff on the left right here. Oh, well, he's, yeah, he's, he's going, going to. Okay. I've tried to put my picture on there and I can't figure that out. I was just going to ask Stacy to sit on this. I don't think yet. I think it feeds from the CB. But I have a picture on, on the other one. Yeah. And well, one of the things on this office tab, and, and, I, and by the way, all feedback is good. Even if you think you're going to beat me up a little bit, all feedback is good. One of the things that we want to um, um, we want to have on the office tab is woods of uniformity. So if everybody logs on and they click on the office tab, that's going to be kind of like the office tab. So this is the stuff that we think you guys need to see. And already we have a little bit of a failure here because we've got office news. Well, apparently we have no office news. Mm -hmm. Well. It'd be nice, especially for demonstration purposes, we're doing a training class today, why in the world can't we have a piece of office news up here? You know, let's make something up. Hey, it's February 11th and it's sunny. Come to the office. I mean, something, for God's <laughs> sakes, okay? There's got to be something that we should put in here. But, it, 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 but that's part of what we want to push from a communication standpoint. One of the things, and some of you may have experienced, who's gotten an email from us recently that said, um, this agent in this office is going to have an open house next Tuesday or next Sunday? An email blast. Okay. Now, I don't know whether you guys find that informational or whether you find that annoying, but I have had some people who have said, really? Do you have to send me an email blast that says that Michael's going to hold an open house in Riverside next Sunday? Okay. Now, and I've had other people that probably are, okay, Michael's holding an open house next Sunday in Riverside, file it, no big deal. Um, but that might be the type of thing, maybe it's a bad example, but that might be the type of thing that we would put up here. Hey, if you're interested, these houses are going to be open on Sunday, these are the agents that are going to hold That would be better than an email, yes. yes. And, and, again, and that may or may not be a reason that you would go, okay? But that might be the type of stuff that we would put up there. Or, 
Now again, I'm going to mix our, our boxes here a little bit, but um, maybe we would put a note up here that says, hey, the sales meeting um, next Tuesday has been rescheduled because Lance is sick or whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. Now we would also want to put that over here on the, on the office events. But anyway, office news obviously is one of those areas. Um, you know, or maybe something's going on with one of our agents. We want to give somebody an update. Hey, just want you to know, you know, Sally's not feeling well, and she's been in the hospital for the last couple of days. And if you want to, you know, <clears throat> give Sally a call or send some flowers, this might be a place to, might be a place to do that. So we could put that type of information out there. Um, okay. So again, it'd be nice if we had some content here. Stacy and I will be talking about that. We've got our office events. Right now, this is becoming, I'm, again, I'm embarrassed to say this, if you're on the video and you're from Claremont or Covina or Redlands or Santa Ana, and you're saying, hey, how come it doesn't have any of them? Redlands, Claremont, Covina, Santa Ana. Well, because quite honestly, we've done a bad job and populate the entire event. One of the things that we want to do, and again, the whole concept of this program is to, uh, for us to connect and kind of unify um, the agents. As a matter of fact, if you've been paying attention on the scroll, there'll be agents from some of the other offices there. Now, I certainly don't expect you to sit here and let's, let's scroll through this because it'll give you a rental in, in Redlands, it'll give you an agent in, in Marino Valley, it'll tell you it's somebody's birthday's coming up on Tuesday. But part of the whole concept of the scroll up here is to, if you are on there periodically, you might say, oh, Jim Jones. It's weird, probably not the best choice of names. Um, but hey, you know, John Smith, Oh, that's what he looks like. I heard he worked over in Redlands. No, actually, I think I... I don't know why that's not scrolling. It should be... Is that thing been stuck it's, on it's, that? Moving. Oh, it is, it's moving. It is? It's just moving slow? Yeah. Okay. Um, but at any rate, that might be the type of thing. It's just kind of a familiarity kind of a thing. For most of us, you may never see any of these other agents unless we do an annual event or an award ceremony or something else like that. But anyway, the events portion of the, of the, um, of the office homepage is basically designed to let you know what's going on. Okay. Um, sales meeting tomorrow in Marina Valley. For sale by owner expired listing class, which is going to, by the way, if you're going to attend Thursday's training, it's going to be focusing on expireds more so than for sale by owners. We've got a lunch and learn next Tuesday, which, again, this is unacceptable. Well, maybe it's not. It should say, I mean, to me, if it says lunch and learn, that's a little meaningless. A lunch and learn. For what? What are we doing? Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, we've got Lonnie with Matthew's inspection group coming out. Fair enough. So I just clicked on that. I think maybe um, I might want to do this a little bit different, but lunch and learn, you know, home inspector guy. So you could quickly take a look at this without having to click on and say, hey, do I want to come to the home inspector guy? Um, and I mean, I'm not interested in that. Are you kidding me? Why are we doing lunch and learn? Ah, I'll show up for the, for the hamburger, but I'm, you know, I'm not interested in that. So all of the stuff we've got going on here, I'm curious, we have open houses. Is that training? That must be training. This would be the, okay, this is the, this is the training class that we're doing on open house. So we're doing an open house training, training class um, next week. Not that we're having an open house on Sunday. So the event calendar is designed for you to basically see what's going on. Now, again, I still haven't put, and by the way, if somebody says, oh, that's the one I'm interested in, let me know so I can put a little check mark up here for you. But honestly, I'm thinking a small percentage of our agents may see no value on anything up here except, eh, I'll log on periodically to see. Are they, are they still having the sales meeting in Covina on, on Tuesday? Let me see. Um, or, hey, are we, by the way, this is completely predicated upon us doing a good job on getting it updated. Right? Mm -hmm. So if we have canceled the sales meeting and we haven't put a note, office news, Reno Valley sales meeting canceled tomorrow. Or no, Reno Valley sales meeting canceled. And then you get and then you guys show up and it's, or vice versa, you know what I'm saying. Then then we've done a bad job. But the whole concept is if we are going to cancel the Reno Valley sales meeting. We will put a note meeting canceled, big office news blast up here in Reno Valley Sales so That's kind of the concept there. Um, everything on the office events ties to the calendar. And the calendar also ties to the um, ties to whatever you may have on your personal. I just clicked on the calendar. This is a very simple 
calendar, and you can customize what you see on the calendar based upon what you want to see. So for example, right now, I'm looking, don't ask me why this says events twice, registered events, special days. You may not be, at special days, for example, are agents, anniversary dates, and birthdays. So if you want to see, anybody got a birthday this week, this month? Me. When, who, who's me? When, when's your birthday, Dwayne? What? This what week? Day? What day? What's the day? <laughs> today's, today's 11. It's the 14th. 13. I mean, yeah, 13. 13? Thursday. Well, I have a birthday every week, man. Oh, come on. Right. <laughs> if your birthday is the 13th, we have a problem because you should be here. Yeah, okay? well, and not my official. not. Yeah. Check uh, November. Check November? <laughs> Are you just... You just <laughs> All right. Well, 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 at any rate, so, so if you're interested in that mm -hmm. and you're one of... Like Debbie, for example. Debbie had a birthday February 3rd. Yeah. So if you're one of those people that would like to know whose birthdays are around you and you're one of those people who want to kind of be a little more social in the office and want to give Debbie a card or give her a hug or at least say, hey, happy birthday, you have access to that. Now, if you can, and, and by the way, it also has, for example, up here, anniversary, Pam Bergman. Pam Bergman is an agent from Claremont. And it says her anniversary date. That's not her wedding anniversary. That's her anniversary at the company. Pam's anniversary with the company has been one year on January 30th. Now, you guys probably don't give a rip about that. But from, a, from an internal management standpoint, that's something that we want to take. We, we need to do a better job recognizing people. I don't care how many times I've to been told this. Ah, it's not important. I don't care. Eh, ah, sales meeting doesn't mean anything to me. Sales award doesn't mean anything to me. A, 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 an acknowledgement on my birthday doesn't mean anything to me. I say baloney. Okay? People like to be recognized. And we are constantly on our side of the fence falling a little bit short in that regard. So, at any rate, now, but again, if you're not interested in seeing this because it's cluttering your calendar, then when you have your calendar up, you just uncheck the special dates um, and those days will go away. Okay. Oh, now my calendar's a little bit cleaner. Okay. Now what I have on here is events. This is the CBTC portal training we're doing right now. Tomorrow sales meeting, training class on FISBO, training class on open house, lunch and learn. Whose mold is it? Lunch and learn, lunch and learn. And then if let let's suppose the portal training again. I don't know that we've done a good job here, but this is how it's supposed to work. Well, what exactly is the CBTC portal training about? I'm not really sure, do I want to attend that or not? Well, you can hover over it or click on it and it will give you a better description. I don't know that this is the best description, but the, and it basically says, join us to learn the ins and outs of the new CBTC portal. Okay, maybe for now, that, and oh, by the way, everybody can come. We're doing it in Marino Valley, but everybody can come. Maybe we could have a better description on there. This is what this is all about, okay? So, um, and, um, and it gives you the dates and the time and all the rest of that. So our goal is to try to be as descriptive on what this training is and what it's all about. For example, I just mentioned earlier when we do the for sale by owner training. Um, okay, this is hunting for more business. Are you working with FISBOs and expires? If not, why? This is a class to teach you the taxes to get more listings for more. I don't know who wrote that, but okay, that's fine. That's fair enough. Um, but maybe we could do a better job describing that class. Maybe not. So, anyway, so this is the basic overview of the calendar. This will have all of the company <clears throat> stuff on it. Okay, so for example, and again, we're in Moreno Valley, so all of us here are Moreno Valley folks. But if there was a training class, well, let me actually let me show you one more. And we have not described this, but let's say this is the Moreno Valley sales meeting. Let's say tomorrow we were doing something special and we were having somebody come out and do training on how to write an offer on a HUD REO, something like that, okay? Um, we would want to have that description there. Marina Valley sales meeting, guest speaker, so on and so forth is coming out to do training on how to write an offer on a HUD, okay? But let's suppose you were an agent in Claremont, and you might be interested, hey, I, don't, I, I need to know what's going on with HUD training. Let me drive out to Marina Valley and take a look at that. So our whole idea is to get 
everything going on in every single office with a better description so that if you are so interested, for example, this might be something you guys are interested in. Norm, who many of you have probably seen or met at various times, he is a certified California Association of Realtors instructor on contracts and disclosures for CAR. He has been teaching a class at the Citrus Valley Association of Realtors for 15 years. Okay? He has a class that's currently going on. It's on Thursday, it's every Thursday from 1 to 3 o'clock. Now granted, it's at the Citrus Valley Association, so you got a good 55 mile drive to get there. But that's not on our calendar. That should be here, okay? Because <coughs> he's talking about it in Claremont and Covina, a lot of those agents go. But again, you guys, if you that, I, I, yeah, Lance's contract claim, training classes are okay. <coughs> but I still feel like I need some more. Maybe I should go attend norms. We'll also put like Ivar type stuff. If we think Ivar is having a good class or, or maybe a good speaker that's going to show up on a Tuesday, we would put that on the calendar, and then again, I'm getting a little bogged down on the calendar, um, but then we could put something like that on the office news. We think it's, or, hey, um, uh, well, this Thursday is a good example. Bruce Norris is going to come speak at the Marina Valley Caravan meeting. Okay? Now, a lot of us have seen Bruce speak many times, and that might be of interest to us, but that might be something that we put on the, that might be a reason for a Marina Valley agent to come to the Marina Valley Caravan meeting what they otherwise would not have come. It's like, ah, that's me. He's gotten a little bit. I'm not interested. So, at any rate, so this is how the calendar is going to work. This is how the office news is going to work. Um, the calendar, by the way, if you're using the contact management system and you're scheduling appointments, if you schedule yourself an appointment on the calendar, will show up your appointments. Okay, mm -hmm. Mrs. Jones, point listing appointment. That will show up on the calendar as well. Um, okay. Um, Right now, we don't have one of these, but I'm, and we're gonna, I'm gonna be careful. I'm gonna get a little bit of feedback from you guys. There's an office vote on it box. We don't currently have any active things to vote on, but this might be the type of thing that we say, we're thinking about painting the building blue. What do you think? Yes or no? It's kind of a silly example, but there would be a little box up here, and then you could say, oh, I have an opinion on that. And you say yes, and then the next thing you know, it gives you a little thing here and says, well, 80% of the agents agree with you. We're painting the office blue, or that's where we're at right now. It's a very simple survey. To be honest with you, I don't want to get bogged down on stupid stuff, um, but I'd like to think that we need your opinion, you know, which frankly we're bad at. We're bad at asking you guys what we think or what you think. Where, would you, where do you want to do the awards party? You want to do the boat? You want to do the hotel? You want to stay local? You want to do it in the office? Click, 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 click. Okay, great. The majority of you said, hey, I want to go to the boat. Now the awards party's over. What did you think about the awards party? Was it good? Was it bad? Was it just right? Whatever happened. And, and again, some of that stuff may seem like it's kind of like little fuzzy stuff, but it also there we could get some valuable feedback from that. You know? Um, and then, by the way, a lot of this can be done anonymously, too, which I know everyone gets a little scared. Yeah, sure, you said it's anonymous. No, I know. I just put a negative thing on there, and they can, in the back behind the scenes, they can see that you know, Shirley said she thought the party sucked and now people are going to not like me. Um, but we might have those type of things. What did you think of the event? Was the sales meeting, for those of you that attended the sales meeting today, did you find it of value? No. Why? Lance talks too much and I'm tired of looking at those same reports. <laughs> okay? I got to tell you, as, 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 and we can laugh about that, but that would be, honestly, that would be, the, that would be very valuable. You know, I think I do a great meeting. If the feedback I'm getting is, you talk too much and we're tired of looking at those reports, well, it doesn't matter if I think it's a great meeting. If the people attending have a negative, then I've got to change something. So at any rate, we've got an opportunity to put these type of things on there. My thought is, is every now and then we might kind of do a fun, silly one, um, but the reality is we want to keep them more business related, okay? On these type of things, by the way, even with the office news, we can experiment around with this. But I believe, for example, if we put a, because um, so far I only have one person that said they've found something of value. But let's suppose we put a, a, a bulletin up here. Marina Valley sales meeting for Wednesday has been postponed. We'll get back to you when we're going to reschedule. That also would spawn an email to you guys. Okay. So you would get an email that says the office news portal has been updated. 
Marina Valley sales meeting is postponed. You could click here maybe for some further information. So you wouldn't necessarily have to log in. You would get the email that says it's been postponed or something's been changed. <clears throat> or there's a new office opinion poll. Click on this link to vote on whether you want to paint the office blue or, or pink, whatever happens. So you would get an email notification on those type of things. Um, and some things we, we can choose to notify you or not. So let's suppose we update the calendar and we're doing it all the time. I believe, and I may be wrong, we as, the, as management has an opportunity to say, do we want to notify the agents that we made this change to the calendar or do we not? Mm -hmm. Well, some things we might want to notify you, some of that is a silly little administration thing. We don't want to send you an email every time we fix a typo. So you can get notifications that way. Um, office links. Um, we have, you know, it pains me to, to, every time I do these classes, I find out all the time people don't even know that we have a YouTube channel. Um, well, our YouTube channel is <coughs> www.youtube.com slash, it used to be CBPRE, it's now CB Town and Country. You may not remember that. Well, you don't have to remember that. Go to the CBTC YouTube channel. Hopefully this link is working. Hey, I don't have anything in user links. Okay, we may not have shared that with, there's, by the way, there's two different types of user links. You can have your own user links under office, are you on user, are you on office tab or user tab? Or? I'm on office tab. Okay, well that should be there. So we got to figure out why you don't see those. Because I saw it last night. Okay, there's nothing in there. Okay, well, but we need to know that because we've had some funky setting things. We and I noticed the banner was global settings, and then the global settings didn't stick, and then. Mm -hmm. And I noticed the banner hasn't moved in the last 10, 15 yeah, it minutes. Has You're right. Yeah. It was earlier. Mine doesn't move on here. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll take it. It, it was previously. So this, so this is our YouTube channel. So if you if you find some if you want to say hey where's the YouTube channel I forgot the address well then you don't have to remember the address you can come oops you can come back into the portal. And through the portal, you can click on the um, YouTube channel. I don't know what sales meetings is. There's a link to sales meetings? I don't see Oh, a link to the sales meetings is a link to our YouTube channel, which actually links to the prior sales meetings. So if you said, hey, I missed a sales meeting, I want to go see what they are, again, it takes you back to the YouTube channel, but it specifically takes you to the sales meeting section of YouTube. Same thing with the Lance Live training. So if you said, oh, I don't remember the address, I want to see some training, you click on Lance Live, and then it will take you to all of the training classes that we've done. So that's the whole concept with the... Does this periodically have an update when changes are made? Because like things you're talking about now, I don't have. If you're not seeing, okay. This is one of those, you're not seeing this on your screen here? I see with four of them, right? I see Lone Wolf Tools, the YouTube Minute Warrior, and Lone Wolf webinars. Mm -hmm. Well, you're actually seeing stuff that we're not seeing. Oh, okay. Some of that, okay. So, Stacy, are you getting all this? Okay. Um, I introduced you earlier. Stacy, everybody, everybody, Stacy. The new right hand. Hey, Boom. The new right hand girl. <laughs> so, and anyway, we'll make sure we do a better job of getting these links updated because they do need to be updated. And the way this is supposed to work is very simple. Stacy or I or whoever changes a link, and then literally 10 seconds later, you refresh your page and you now have access to the same link we have. So obviously, we've got a disconnect somewhere. So, right, so these are just a bunch of a, a bunch of, of links that you may or may not find valuable. The photo album is just it's just kind of a, a just a silly little office thing. This is some photos that we did at the Wounded Warrior Regiment down in, in Camp Pendleton. Um, so they just kind of scroll through, and that's just literally we could have multiple albums. So you know, we'll see how this goes. We'll kind of build a library of hey, this was the the sales awards, and this was the Wounded Warrior project, and this was you know we did a barbecue or whatever it happens to be. You guys could have your own links. Maybe you might want to have a link to HUD Home Store or you know Home Path or Freddie Mac or whatever. So you could put your own little links over here if you want. Um, so this is basically kind of the, the meat of what's going to be here. I'm going to click this up here to see. Maybe I might have clicked something to stop it from scrolling. Um, and I know previously this thing has been scrolling pretty good. Yeah, and there we'll see what happens with that. Um, so, um, so that's the main piece up here in the real estate section. And I'm going to tell you visually, I think this can get a little confusing the way they've got these buttons up top. But at any rate, 
for now, when you highlight real estate and it has this information here, at least from here over, this is not something that you will be using. The goal, remember earlier I said the goal is when I change my picture it's going to go down to globalbanker.com. Mm -hmm. The goal, and this is going to happen, I don't know whether it's going to be 60 days or 6 months, but the goal is to get rid of Sky Slope and replace it with the portal. And it, when that happens, you will no longer go to Sky Slope. You will come here, and when you want to take a look at your listings, you will manage your listings. And on your listing side, it will be very similar to what we see in Sky Slope, the checklist, and these are the listings that I have available, and so on and so forth. When you want to manage your um, transactions, um, you will come over here and you'll click Manage, and then this will be your transactions that you have open within Skyslope slash the portal and with your checklist and all of it. This is the manager's view so it looks a little bit different. But um, right now, don't fool, don't go in and add a listing or don't go in and add a transaction. Don't do that. You could, there's nothing to stop you, except right now we use Skyslope. The goal is, as much as I know you all love Sky Slope, <laughs> um, and we've got a lot of time and energy invested in the Sky Slope. Um, the goal is, is to get rid of Sky Slope, and then hopefully that'll be another little markup here. It'll be again, it'll be one less place for you guys to go outside. It'll be internal, and then your Sky Slope information will now be all contained within here. So, on the real estate tab. These buttons, there's also a showing thing. I don't know if this would be valuable to you, but in theory, you could schedule showings, link it with your contact management system. So I know you're joining and Michael are using it. So if you had a buyer that was interested in Main Street and was your listing, you could link it. You could kind of create a showing that would show up on your calendar that says, I'm showing 123 Main Street on Saturday at 2 o'clock. The showings one isn't showing up on here. It's, it's are not. You missing it? Yeah. Okay. Um, and probably. Actually, I wish right now they would take this entire thing off of your guys' site because we're not using it. So it just it just could create some confusion. But that's the idea of what's going to go on with the with the real estate tab, the communication tab. Be curious to see what if any sort of um, um, and again, your guys is going to look a little bit different because I'm logged in as an admin. What sort of buying we get on this? Um, this is you know sent internal emails. Um, you can create some your own news articles, we can add an event, we can create a follow album, we can make links, add, da, da, da. Yours is going to be a little bit different, but part of what this is designed to do is potentially you could communicate with us. Okay? Um, you could send an email, you could still send a regular email of course, but if you're logged in here and you say you want to send a quick note to, to me or to the county and say, hey, I'm, I don't understand my 1099, 1099 doesn't make sense to me. You could go through and talk to the accounting department. You could communicate back and forth or internally um, within the team. You can also communicate within your own um, transactions, the email within the system. Keep in mind, this is an independent, separate system to your Gmail or something like that. So there may be some challenges with that. Um, the <coughs> membership portion is basically admin. I remember, do you guys even have a membership button? Yeah. Yeah. You do? Okay. Well, you will. You could use the membership right now. This is set up for administration, but you can have a membership as part of your contact management system, um, or part. Of, or you may have create a group of 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 um, hot buyers. So you would add them to a hot buyer list. Um, you could create a team within the office. You have access to agents within the office. Maybe there's five agents in the office that you have some sort of affinity with, and every time you get um, a new listing or a buyer you want to send a note out to those five agents and say, hey, I just got a new listing and it's on new ranch, whatever happens to be. So you could, you could basically create a, little, uh, a membership deal. Um, under the contact management, and by the way, for those of you that are using it, help me out here a little bit, um, which by the way, you notice this hasn't changed. Right now, all we're really looking at is this because I haven't clicked on any of these. Um, under the contact management side, there is a um, contacts, So you can click on the contact side. Now keep in mind, I'm logged in as the master of the universe here. Mm -hmm. um, so I can, I know, and I, and if you have a problem with this, it's just the way it is. 
all the contacts that Michael has in the system, I get to see. Okay? I don't, I mean, so that's how, if you're going to use this system, that's how it is. To be honest with you, I don't know that I'm really interested in that, but that's that's how it works. Those, those guys are in there. So, can I see my phone? No, no, no. You'll only be okay. able to see your own. <laughs> but as the, as the master of the universe over here, I can, I can see the contacts Michael has. So that may be a reason for some of you to say, oh, I don't want to use the system because I don't want Lance seeing my contacts are. Yeah. Fair enough. Then do what I've been telling you guys for as long as you've worked in this office. Go get yourself a damn contact management program. Okay? But this one is free. It's being provided by the office. But at any rate, you can go through, manage your contacts. I, I apologize for using the <coughs> demo, Michael, but he's got a buyer by the name of Omar, and um, he's not currently on any campaigns, and he put him in manually, and here's his phone number attached to Michael, and this is the most recent activity was, was yesterday, or whatever it happens to be. So you put the contacts in there, and then you basically have the ability to manage um, and filter them, and all of you can sort them by last name. So last name contains, I'm not going to go too deep in this, but last name contains um, Garcia, that's the top one. So I type in Garcia, and it's going to filter this down, and the only thing I'm going to see here, oops, I got to search it. Mm -hmm. Now the only thing I'm going to see is Garcia. This is a very simple contact man. And actually, you've got four Garcias. Okay. Um, this is not super robust, but from what I've discovered <coughs> in my years of preaching about contact management, most agents don't want or need robust. They need basic, you know, and that's exactly what this is. So anyway, so we've got. Um, and by the way, you can import and export these contacts. So if, if you've got a database you're using right now, you can import them in, which I think a few of you guys have already done. My, my only, well, maybe only at this point, concern is we can't really label, say, a particular group of people as we want, say, like buyers, sellers, or whatever. Okay. It's, it's limited. It may be, but within the system, and again, there's, there is a little bit more of an advanced um, class to this. To be honest with you, I'm I'm still at the basic learning level on this program. I haven't gone through all of it. It's my understanding to answer Dwayne's question as he leaves the room, is you can group these guys. You can group them as buyers, sellers, past clients, open house clients, and basically filter them accordingly. Do some very basic grouping, which is which is important because you're gonna want to basically try to group them. So in any so the contact management system is basically again not going to go through all of it. Um, but it kind of gives you the, oh, by the way, there's two activities that are currently scheduled within this system. And it is a, um, again, Michael's using it. So you've got two things that are scheduled for these guys. I'm not going to click on this to go through it, but you can say I'm supposed to call them. I'm supposed to call them next Tuesday. I have an appointment on Friday. Okay? So you, sorry, I guess. I'll put that on. I'll put that on quiet. So, um, you basically plug them into the system. If you do schedule an appointment, the appointment will show up on your calendar. So if you're using the calendar back here, and you have an appointment for Mr. Garcia at 2 o'clock on Tuesday, it will show up here. Okay? 2 o'clock on Tuesday, we'll go see Mr. Garcia. Um, can you, and Lance, you'll know what I'm referring to, can you alarm it? I don't know. I don't know. I would hope so. And if you don't know what Debbie's referring to, most contact management systems have little reminders. Mm -hmm. And those reminders say, ah, I scheduled an appointment for next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Today is this Tuesday. I need something to remind me on, to, on Monday that I'm supposed to call this guy on Tuesday. That, again, I don't know. I'm just, unfortunately, I'm just only prepared today to kind of give you the, the, the five or the 30,000 foot view. Um, but there are, are, honestly, there's a lot of videos associated with this. There are other training portals, and as we start to implement this, we'll do more and more. Is any, well, actually, I'm going to put at least one more check, because I know, actually, you're using it. So I got Dwayne, and I got Michael, at least on the contact management stuff. Now, one of the nicest things, I, I have contact management. And you're using it. I, I right? imported 500 of my Gmail contacts in there. Sweet. Wow. You can have them all in. You gotcha. You gotcha. You're using it for the calendar? Oh, look at this. Sweet. You put, I use it for the calendar. Oh, yeah. boy, all right. I almost got you guys. Okay, now, one of the nicest things in here is the campaigns, okay? This, you like the campaign? No, I, I just wanted to add a question about the campaigns. Okay. 
One of the nicest things is the campaign. So I'll show you basically. Let's just pretend for a moment that Alejandro is a buyer and they haven't quite bought yet, but Michael wants to put them on some sort of a campaign, which is really the, 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 the well, it's not necessarily the core, but my opinion is one of the main things that you guys want to be able to create within the database. So um, there's a letter campaign and there's basically an email campaign. They can be blended, but I'm just going to show you the show you the email campaigns right now. And again, the letters are the same. Oh, they are the same? Okay. Well, again, I'm, I'm learning something. So these are the campaigns. Actually, you've got some campaigns that you've set up, so good for you. Michael has some campaigns that he already has basically set up and ready to go. Um, so if I, if I go, what's that? I don't know what I'm doing. Well, you're playing. You're learning. You're learning. You're playing. So, I mean, I, I, don't, I certainly don't have a problem with that. So these are the campaigns that he has set up. So if I can go to campaign that contains, um, Buyer for Life number three. Ah, there we go. Check Michael's access status because I think Michael has actually overwritten um, some of our campaigns. But that's okay. This one that says Frank Gibson is actually a, I believe, let's see if we can find it. Okay. This is actually a different camp. Oh my goodness, I wonder how much of this stuff you've overwritten. This is kind of a big deal. Let's kind of take a look. <laughs> the, these can, actually, I'm not since these appear to have, have been modified a little bit. Let me go down to one. Hopefully, that's not modified. Um, the thinking of selling campaign. Okay, the thinking of selling campaign basically contains some stuff. Okay, and it is a a big letter. <clears throat> it says, "Hey, maybe you're out knocking on someone's door, and they say, yeah, 'Yeah, I'm thinking about it, but I'm not quite ready.' Letter one can basically start." one day after the campaign starts, and it's basically a letter that says, are you thinking of, oh, nice to meet you today, I understand you're thinking of selling, da da da, can I keep in touch with you? Letter number two goes out seven days later, and it says, hey, it's been a week since I've last contacted you, just want to let you know that I'm the neighborhood specialist, whatever. All of these can be customizable. All of these can be tweaked. Letter number three, number four, number five. Once this is set up, super, super simple super super easy um, and then you just attach the um, specific campaign to the specific client unfortunately it appears as though somehow some way um, Michael appears to have gotten into the master database <laughs> and, um, wiped them all here's out here's what here's what mine looks like not like his so if that I don't telling you anything I don't see for life. Um, well then maybe I'm Maybe I'm just in the wrong spot. Yeah, because mine doesn't have any of Michael's stuff. Yeah, let me try this one more time. Well, that would be good. New campaigns, new campaigns. Maybe you're able to see everything. Well, yeah, but I should also be able to see. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe this is the problem. Oh, you created your Oh, you know, I'm sorry. You're right. Apparently, I need to take a look at your campaigns. Thank you very much. Okay, so these are the ones that you guys are basically seeing. Okay, mm -hmm. so we've got the client for life thinking about relocating, buying a home, whatever it happens to be. So now you click in, and again, it goes through, and now you've got additional information on whatever those happen to be. And then all of this stuff is customizable. This is basically, this, oh, by the way, it's already written, if that wasn't clear. The letter is already written for you. And it's basically done in an in, in email. <clears throat> Thanks for visiting my virtual real estate resource career. Congratulations on taking the first step towards yada yada yada. You tweak it, you make it, you know, you make it yours. Um, so 
Um, second letter, um, you may be able to buy a home with less money than you thought. This is just, it's basically the campaign. You edit your name, company, all the rest, that sort of stuff, your logo. Some of these things you can, you can completely tweak and you can, you can update the header. Um, you can drop a picture of you in here, drop a picture of your farm or neighbor or whatever it happens to be. So all of these campaigns are, are customizable to whatever you want. Um, what was that? Is that the third letter? I'm curious as to what the last letter says. Yeah. It's not really the last letter, but in this particular campaign, it's the last letter. Buying new or resale, new homes are incredibly appealing, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it goes to the process. So these campaigns are basically designed to, you know, how's that saying go? Set it and forget it. You know, you put you put a buyer on the you put a buyer on the and you can create your own by the way. Um, you you know, make whatever they are, clients for life, sellers. Okay, that to me sounds like a campaign that's designed towards I just sold your house. Um, and I let's actually pull it up and see what the first letter says. I want to tell you again how much I enjoy working with you. It's exactly what we thought. I just sold your house and it closed. Okay, now we all know the statistics, right? What percentage of realtors follow up with their seller after close of escrow? Super small. Don't. Okay? Don't. Right. So this gives you an opportunity to basically say, and again, this one's this one's kind of, I don't know if it gets washed out, but that's kind of a picture of a cloud. It's been 45 days. So this would, I just sold Shirley's house. I put her on the Seller for Life campaign. I obviously called her and said, thank you, and here's your closing statement, and good luck, and all the rest of it. So 45 days later, she gets this email. It's been 45 days. I want to tell you again how much I enjoy working this side of your home. By the way, you can customize this. So if you don't like this, you can tweak it. Let you know I will continue to be available for all your real estate needs, so on and so forth. Right? Kind of cool. And once it's set, yeah. So if you put on the com campaign, it doesn't automatically send it out on the due date. You have to go in and tell it to? No, no, no. It's automatic. Once really? I once, once, set the campaign. once I set <clears throat> Shirley on this campaign, mm -hmm. 45 days from the day I set it. And I don't, maybe I don't want it to be 45. Maybe I want to send it sooner. Mm -hmm. I want to send it in 30 days, which means in this case I need to go in and I need to tweak that letter. It's been 30 days. Okay. So, but you yeah. need to go into each letter then ahead of time and change no. who you are. No, no, no. It's okay. all automatic. Just set it and forget it. Okay. So let, let's use Shirley as now. I just sold her house. We closed escrow. 45 days later, she's going to get the letter that I just sent. I don't have to do that. Just, oh. boom, it just gets sent to her. 45 days after that, she's going to get this one. This is email, by the way. Oh, email. Okay. This is email. Okay. <clears throat> Um, now again, th this might not make sense. This already doesn't make sense. You know, I sold her the house in August. Mm -hmm. Sixty days later, it's not going to be spring. It's going to be winter. Um, so these might need to be tweaked a little bit. You know, so when am I going to send this? But this is this is just more of a I'm touching you, okay? Um, I, I'm, I'm giving you I'm giving you something to let you know I'm here. The next letter is a summer. So this might be one that is calendar based. Maybe I have, I'm going to set this up. I got to, I got to think this through. I need, to, I need to set this up to fire on January 1 for it to work for the seasons or whatever the hell happens to me. So if once we have a listing that's in there, instead of using Sky Slope, we would use this. And then when that closes in here, then that would automatically generate the letters? Well, you'd have to set them up on the that. campaign. You'd have to say, okay, I'm your client. You just closed me out in Sky Slope. You just closed me out. You now go back to um, you go back to the contact mm -hmm. in here, mm -hmm. and you basically I haven't done this, so let me let me see if we can easily figure it out. I pull up. Well, actually, I'm in the campaign section, so I don't have anybody set up. Mm -hmm. So I go to my contacts. I find. Um, I don't know. If you have, well, let's just pretend I'm Garcia. I pull up Omar, Omar Garcia, and let's see if we can, where do we attach him to a campaign? Anybody got him? I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> drip campaign. I click drip campaign. Add a trip. <coughs> I want to put him on the, what do we call it? Seller for life? Client for, Client life. for life, life seller. Yeah. Oh, okay. Add contact to this campaign. Okay. I just mm -hmm. added to that campaign and it's going to start today. 
So 45 days from now, he's going to get that email, which doesn't make sense for him. Okay, so we would want to tweak it. So I think to take him off the campaign, I probably put the trash can. Yeah. What's this one? Um, click to remove or remove campaign from contact history. Okay, so we're going to take him off. Okay, so it's just that simple. But I would have to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now he's set up, and that those are the campaigns that are available for that particular for that particular person. So, um, and again, these these letters are going to need some attention, which is why getting back to what I thought Michael had maybe went in and corrupted the whole thing. Actually, what Michael has done, and you've gone in, I have not. I don't want to go in and look at your stuff, but what you've actually done is you've gone in and you've created um, some letters, you've put some time, you've put some effort into it, you've done what needs to be done, okay? And now you're, now you're rocking and rolling. Now this one's a little more specific, okay? They've created this, this company that makes this is a Canadian company, that's why it has a, a Canadian one. But, Let's suppose I want to put them on the holiday campaign. You got the basics, the Christmas, the New Year's, and St. Patrick's, the Thanksgiving, and of course you can add Fourth of July, so on and so forth. So I'm going to assume the New Year's letter is a New Happy New Year. Okay, okay. pretty basic stuff. Because I so, use that with cool bank mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. and just you know tag each yep. one of the holidays. Well, and the nice part about this, let's suppose you've got 500 people on your in your database or 5,000. Mm -hmm. Well, you can put them on multiple campaigns. That's so if you put them all on the on the holiday campaign, you pick which one. Oh, I'm not interested in. in and I, you know, and right. we all have different opinions on this, but oh, I don't want to send anything out that has anything to do with Christmas. That mm -hmm. could be offensive. You know, we don't have to. So, but I but I feel pretty good about New Year's. I feel pretty good about um, uh, Valentine's Day. I feel pretty good about Labor Day, Memorial Day. So you pick the ones you want, and you pick the dates you want them to send. Mm -hmm. Now, the cool part about that is once they're set up, done. Mm -hmm. It's all set out automatically, and they're going to get that every single time. Be careful with that. Sometimes you might overdo it. But you could have them on, obviously, you could have them on multiple, multiple campaigns. So, um... You do okay button on top. Oh. Thank you. So... Anyway, so you've got basically a variety of campaigns in here. Let, let's be honest, these campaigns are going to, as Michael has apparently done, going to take some work to customize them. I doubt that you're just going to be able to pick a campaign and send it out without having to do a little bit of tweaking. You can go in and set it and save it up for yourself. Now one thing that I would, and I may be wrong on this, Michael, but I think, I don't think you want to have your campaign named after the client. <coughs> You want to have this buyer campaign or whatever it happens to be. And this client is now attached to the buyer campaign. Mm -hmm. You've actually named the campaign after the name of the client. Yeah, well, I wasn't sure what to do there, so I saw I get it. You well. Hey, you know what? You're in there, you're playing around. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. One of your goals, if we set up in contact management, is it eventually going to talk to coldwellbanker.com and send out those campaigns as well? Right. I don't know, but that would be fantastic if it did. Yeah. Because then it comes from the Cobalt Banker corporate side as well with us too. That would be fantastic. That that I don't know, mm -hmm. but that's that seems to be the natural progression of something like this, mm -hmm. where you sit back and, and, and you and you literally <coughs> try to make this communication as seamless as it possibly mm -hmm. as it possibly can be. Can, so. can the recipient disconnect from receiving these emails? Yeah, it's just like anything else. Okay. When you get those um, when you get those kind of those spam emails, you sit back and says, "Hey, please remove me from your list." Yes, it can happen, which is why you need to be careful. Mm -hmm. If you're, you know, well, let's. I would put this in two gathering. If I just sold you a house and I send you an email, mm -hmm. respectfully send you an email three, four times a year. That's not bad. I would hope you're going to be okay with yeah, that. If I'm starting to spam you three times a week, at some point mm -hmm. you're like, "Well, Lance, you were a great agent. Okay. Stop." You're going to say no. Okay. Now, now the flip side may be true. I just met Eric today, and tomorrow he gets an email from me. It was nice to meet you. He may say, what the hell? I talked to this guy on the porch. He was obnoxious. <laughs> okay. So he may disconnect with me immediately. Um, but then again, that's okay. It's going to happen. Okay. But hopefully, at least on your past clients and such. Um, and we all, let's face it, we all have past clients in one form or another. 
if we're not reaching out to them in one form or another, I mean, this is so simple to do. And, it, and it's literally set it and forget it. You're done. And it's free. Did I mention it's free? I mean, use this stuff. You, talk, who uses Top Producer in here? Okay. Top, well, William, if you're using Top Producer, you probably don't want to use this. I started to, and then I was like, you know what? I went no. to this Realtors Tech Seminar. No, you don't want to use this. I, I decided this is what's for me. I, I really like it. You like this or Top no, Producer? I like to, I, I just started playing okay, with it. Top as Producer. Today, okay, guys. Really good. Scale of 1 to 10 contact <clears> management <throat> systems. I don't know if top producer is a 10, but th this is a 1 or a 2. Top producer is a 9 or a 10. Okay, top producer is a real, but you have to pay, what are you paying for top producer? 30 bucks a month? I've got a combination of two, two different things. You're uh, paying something. I'm paying 100 a month, because I, but I got a bundle of So you got the bundle. I got it. It's so paying 100 bucks a month. That's fantastic. Okay, stick with it and use it. Don't even <clears> touch this. Most of our agents are not in a position to spend $100 a month on that. In the meantime, use this, okay? It's free. It works, man. It, it works, and it works. I don't want to say just as well. Top producer has the whistles and the bells and a bunch of other stuff, like gold mine does. Um, so at any rate, so there's your there, there's the brief overview of what's going on within the contact management portion of the program. Um, Econcier. Be really curious as to see whether or not we can actually build the Econcier portion of this. I hope that we can. The idea within Econcier is to create a database of, of service vendors, okay? Um, and have that database of service vendors available through our, basically through our five offices. So for example, you know, you're, it's a Saturday afternoon and you have a client and they need, they say, geez, can you recommend a good, you know, landscaper to me or a good plumber in Marina Valley? Okay, well right now there's only two vendors we have in here. We just played around with it. Lone Wolf Technologies, that's the name of the company. We're going to delete them. There's no reason for them to be there. But we just played around and we made Snappy Landscape. He's our landscaper. We put him down as a lawn, a lawn care guy. Anyway, you could go in and you could say, hey, and he has five star rating. Okay, so we could put that in there. This is really going to be only as good as the agents who are participating with him. So, for example, we may have four or five different lenders. You may say, hey, I just love Cheryl with Cobalt Bank or Mortgage. And, you know, Debbie may say, no, 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 the B of A guy, you know, man, you know he's going to call you Meddy. Um, Meddy <laughs> says, no, I'm going to do the, you know, the whatever guy, whatever it happens to be. So you put in your five or six different lenders, your title companies, your escrow companies, your plumbers, or whatever it happens to be. And then you could come on in here and potentially have a database of, of those type of folks. I'm going to basically use it because I get this stuff a lot. I have people all the time that will say, who should I use? Let's just say it's from a lender standpoint. And I say, you know what, hey, right now we're trying to see whether, whether um, Cheryl with Cold Maker Mortgage is going to do any good, but you know what, JR is back in the office at Wells Fargo and so on and so forth. You know, well, what's their contact? Rate? I don't have it with me. Go to the concierge. Search mortgage, and you're going to see Cobalt Banker Mortgage, and you're going to see Jared Wells Fargo, whatever else, and all their contact information is there. So we're going to plug, and we can kind of give them a little bit of a rating, okay? Mm -hmm. So we can sit back and say, I'm going to be kind of careful with this. I can see this could become a little bit of a problem. But let's suppose you just did a deal with Cheryl at Cobalt Banker Mortgage, and it wasn't so good. And it's like, eh, it wasn't so good. Okay? And to be honest with you, I don't know that I have a problem with that. If, we, if I'm getting, if we've used it, and, and, and honestly, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I might not be happy that she didn't do it so good, but I, I, I would kind of like to know that. So if I say, you're not cutting mustard, you need to get it. Okay? And frankly, your, your associates um, very well maybe, um, you know, come, would like to know that. You know, Sherry has a bad experience with, with Bank of America. Well, this guy was no good. I think rid of Robin liked the guy at Bank of America. I don't know what Sherry's talking about. I thought he was pretty good. So we put that sort of stuff in there. So we'll see how that how that goes. Okay, the resources. Um, actually, before I get to resources, I kind of messed up. Let me go back to real estate. I said earlier that we're not going to use these buttons, but I, true to a degree. Right now, these buttons under here, these pie chart and the gears. I said this will sky slope will be will be re, this will replace sky slope. That's going to be true. However. Right now, one of the things that I hope all of you will sit back and say, "Yeah, put me in, put me down as a as, as a as a as a believer," 
is under under these there are a couple reports. That's supposed to be if you can't see that very well. That's like a little a little paper. <coughs> okay. So you click on that and you go to Broker Wolf PDF report. You may say, "What's Broker Wolf?" I wish they would rename it because you guys don't know what Broker Wolf is. Why does it say that? Why doesn't it just say transaction reports or something like that? I don't know why they do that. It drives me mad. So at any rate, you can click on the reports. Um, it'll, it'll basically give me a drop down of types. Right now, I don't have a various types, but I can plug in here. Who am I interested in? Let me just. Me. I have used it to look at my reports. You have? Yeah. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. um, so this is going to pull the reports that are available from Lance, okay? And it's going to say what is available, okay? Did you click search? Well, and it, well, yeah, I think I already did search, but I'm actually in the wrong oh. spot. When I click reports, I needed to put, actually, it's interesting. Let me be here. It looks as though we, just, we only have the um, pie. You only have the pie chart? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. It's actually, uh, and that's fine. So you don't have the little gear? No. no. Okay. No. So something has changed, Stacy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stacy, you got that? Something's yeah. changed. Okay. Um, maybe if I <laughs> could, let me go over here. Maybe it's different on the home. Maybe that's my problem. Okay, um, kind of interesting, but what is supposed to pull here, and I, I did this demo two weeks ago and it pulled just fine, uh, and I'm curious if you're in the Debbie, see if you can pull your reports, but with these PDF reports, you should be able to pull, nothing's should, coming up for me okay. now, okay. and it came up when accounting put out the Thing with the 1099? Yeah. Okay. Well, what's supposed to show up on here, and we obviously got a little <coughs> hitch, up, hitch in the giddy up. And by the way, you can only see your own stuff. I obviously had a list of people's names because we're the masters of the universe and have access to everybody. But you pull up a report, it basically says, give me a transaction report. I want a history of everything that I've closed. Okay. Now, full disclosure, if you go back and say, give me everything that we did in 2013, it may be a little spotty because we haven't used this program for all of 2013. But if you want to sit back today and say, hey, what have I done in January or from 2014 forward, it should be perfect, 100%. That's what I got a listing report of listings that came ah. in January. Oh, and you just pulled it up? I just pulled it up. Okay, yeah. all right, then I'm... And will it let you do transactions? I just did listings on okay. it. I didn't pull transactions. Okay, well, we're having a little technical difficulty, but it's the same, actually, let me see if it'll let me pull listings. Yeah. Let me see if I can pull up the report that uh, Eric just pulled up. Mouse is kind of giving me a little fit. Come on. Ah, okay. So, um, listing report. Who do I want to have a listing report from? I'm going to come down here. I want to get Lance. And I want my actives and listings from, I uh, go back to January 1st, I guess, through to today. And yeah, maybe I can plug in some stuff and let's view it, see what it gives me. Um, Okay, so these now keep in mind. Yeah, no, I haven't taken this many listings. Our rentals going here. So, but but if this was um, in theory, not in theory, in fact, these are all of the listings that went under my public ID from January one through today, um, and it gives me the basics straight away in Beaumont. Um, it's a four bedroom, three bath. Obviously, it's a rental. There's a house that we listed on Victor, and obviously got a whole bunch of more rentals and a little house down there. So the idea for you guys, remember I said earlier, the MLS feeds into this, okay, that's why I took the time to do this chart, is there may be some value in you, in you, and value to you in running this type of report for historical, but also for what have I got going on? What, what's, what, do I have three active, yes, I have three active listings, cool. Okay. Or no, wait a minute. The report says I have three listings, but I don't. I have five. Okay, well, why are they not pulling from the MLS? One thing I've noticed is that the link from the MLS to the system actually has worked pretty well. But if you notice, like earlier we had a little glitch, if it's, 
if it's broken, you might, hey, Stacy, for some reason, the last three listings I've taken this month have not pulled over. Why is that? So you can write your own report. It also might be something that you're interested in. As we start to build this data, six months from now, you might want to sit back and say, oh, how many listings have I actually taken for this year? You know, what have I done? How did my January compare to my February compare to my March? Am I doing well? Am I on target for my goal? So you can run all of these internal reports for your own stuff. You also, I think one of the options it gave me under here is, is okay, these I only selected active. What if I wanted to see what I had pending? Okay, I want to get my pending listing report. So I deselect that and I click on pending. And and I click view report and it's now going to pull up a report. I don't have anything pending right now. Is that correct? Wait a minute, I've got three pending listings. Why is this not showing pending? Well, maybe there's a, there's a, a, a break in the database. Um, and then these reports also, what I was trying to show on the transaction side, which I think is, would be valuable to all of you, is if I could get a display, it would be a very similar report. What business do I have currently pending? listings and buy sites because we know if you do a buy side transaction over here in the MLS, if you're on the buy side and the listing agents with Remax, well that's not going to come over here. Mm -hmm. There's no, the, the MLS doesn't have the ability, mm -hmm. the only thing they know is listing site. Even though it says who we are, the public ID, the systems don't talk to each other like that. So any buy side transactions that you have are not going to flow. That gets back to when we start adding transactions. It would be nice if we got rid of Skyslope. He said, wait a minute, I don't actually don't do very many listings. All of my transactions are on the buy side of the transaction. Mm -hmm. okay. So you could run a report and say you've got three open escrows where you all represent the buyer. Or you could say, my report's blank. How come I don't, I want to see that information. You run over to Stacy, you run over to me, and we sit back and say, oh, we got to fix that. Because quite honestly, part of this whole program is very self-serving. Okay. One of the reasons that I'm doing this program is because I would like to know what business that you have. Mm -hmm. Okay, And the reality is, far too many times, we don't know the business that you have. Because it hasn't gotten into the sky slope or it hasn't gotten into the system. And what happens far too frequently is somebody comes in with a file and a check. I just closed escrow, pay me. And we're like, what? So one of the things we're hoping that we're going to accomplish with this is that you guys will see some value. I can put a couple more check marks up here. And periodically, you're going to want to take a look at it. And the nice part, I'm unfor it's unfortunate these reports aren't displaying, but it would click on there and it would say, hey, you have four open escrows. Close of escrow date, February, February, March, and April. And it'll give you the math. And it'll basically kind of give you an indication. So now you can get an idea of, how does my February look? How does my March look? Oh, well, geez, February looks great. I'm going to close a bunch of deals in February, but I have nothing stacked up for March. And then when we talk about things communicating within the system, you'll, like a sky slope, you now are talking to the buyer's agent or whoever you're on the other side of the deal, and you say, ah, this is scheduled for February 20th. I'm not going to make it. We just did an extension to February 28th or, or April 10th. You make that change in the system here, that will make the change everywhere along the way. Um, and the same thing with the MLS. You change a property, let's say you're the listing agent, and you change from active to pending. Well, the MLS talks to the portal, which talks to the system, and says, ah, oh, your listing on Main Street is now pending. Puts it over in your, in your transaction site for you to basically manage the transaction. Um, Debbie had said that, we, I think I, I'm going to paraphrase what she said, and if I'm wrong, correct me. We, we sent out a report that said, hey, this is your 1099 activity for last year. We asked you to get back to us and say, does it look right? Please let us know. Next year, it's going to be so much easier for us because we're not even going to send out the thing. We're going to send an email to everybody that says, go up here, run your history for 2014, tell us if it looks good. Is there something missing? The reason I'll know the answer is there's nothing missing is because the only way for it to show up on the report is if you've been paid a check. But we're going to tell you to go there anyway. And we're going to say, we're going to send you a 1099 in two weeks. It's going to say whatever your report says. 
take a look at that report. If there's a problem, I'm assuming there's going to be some ghost somewhere we don't know about. You can say, I closed, you know, 17 transactions and I made 84,000 bucks. Yep, Main Street, South Street. Yep, yep, yep those are the ones. Yep, I, don't, I, geez, I didn't realize I made that much money. That's great. And then we're going to send you 1099 for 84,000 bucks. Or whatever it happens to be. All right? And all of that stuff is live and in real time. Um, and again, as we develop, it's unfortunate we haven't had the system for the last four or five years, because if we had had some archival stuff in there, you could also sit back and then you could kind of run some, when we do our, um, our budgeting and our, our, our planning yes, class, yeah. advanced planning or business plan, yeah. you could sit back and <clears throat> run year over year reports. Oh, wow, I did so great in 2011. And what happened to 2012? And what happened to 2013? Why, why is my income going down? What's happening? And we can maybe draw some conclusions. So those are under the real estate tab, and again, we'll have to figure out why these reports aren't pulling. Um, but they look very similar to the listing report that, that Eric just showed and I pulled up. Okay, under the, and we're going to wrap up here probably in about 10 minutes or so. Under the resource tab, most of you have already seen the resource tab. Um, we've talked about this in a couple sales meetings once or twice. This is an area that I can guarantee you, you will either go there unprompted, or you will ask me for some information and I will tell you to go to this spot. And it's not so much that I don't want to sit down with you right now and give you the information, but you're going to call me on a, on a Saturday afternoon. Anybody in this room ever called me and said, hey, I, I, I forgot the NAID number. I'm submitting a HUD offer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm driving down the street. I don't have the darn thing memorized. I don't know. I'm going to say, go to the portal, click on the resource button, Click on the Manage button, and within the Manage button, we're going to have a whole bunch of documents, okay? Which is, by the way, this is available 24-7. <clears throat> Internet connection, any computer on the planet, you can access this. So I know if you're logged on, your folders may look a little different. Stacy. this is one of the problems that we've had with what we see. They don't always get to see <coughs> their settings and stuff straight. But there'll be some folders. One of those which everybody should have, hopefully be able to have access to is called Office Documents. Within the Office Documents, there'll be stuff, legal, license, and insurance. If you call me up and say, hey, I'm working with the bank or I'm working with somebody and they need a copy of the E&O policy. Well, right now, the only thing we have under legal license insurance is the E&O certificate for 2013 and 14. And it's a PDF, and you'll get Are you going to put things yeah. like the corporate license in All there for BPO and stuff like that? All of that. Everything. Okay. Everything. Everything that you could possibly want to have. Um, our goal is to get it downloaded here and say, hey, the E&O policy is there. Go get it. You need a copy of the broker's license. It's there. Go get it. You need... Um, instructions on how to fill out the NAID number. And again, well, obviously we're going to have some folders. We're going to try to keep this as organized as possible. One of the challenges with this is I send you there and now you, like Shirley said earlier, oh, I can't find it. Okay, well, we're going to have to try to make some common sense, logical, you know, paths on where to, where do you find the, you know, insurance. Maybe legal license and insurance is not the best folder for that. Maybe we need to rename some stuff. But everything that you could possibly want to have and need access to 24-7, we want to have available to you. You know, like license for, for <coughs> BPO clients. You know, Paul, you, you got an REO account, and we're any, a lot of, even the BPO accounts a lot of times now want That's copy, not always go there for it. copy of the <laughs> E&O policy. The NAID number. Um, well, let's go through a few other things. One of the, um, we got a web images. I don't know that we have anything in here. Um, a lot of the, and by the way, you may think, wait, this almost kind of looks and sounds a little bit like CB Works. Some of the big popular stuff that we have on CB Works, I want to get here. So, for example, we may rename this web images and just call it like um, um, Cobalt Banker Logos. So you click in here, we've got a, a, a JPEG image of Cobalt Banker Town and Country, or Cobalt Banker, or the, the logos that we may have available. Like you're doing some printing and you want to do something, hey, can you send us a copy of the logo? I don't have that. You know? Well, boom. We'll have the logos in here, all that type of stuff. Um, training materials. If you've been in the training class, you've seen me go through this more than once. Um, as a matter of fact, we dragged Stacy in here last Thursday and said, we're going to make sure we do a better job updating the folders and the training. So we're going to do training on purchase agreements. 
You click on purchase agreements. Right now we have one document, the RPA guide. Those, that's where the training materials will be. So if you want to come to the contract purchase class, so far the only document that we have is the RPA guide. And this is part of the material. This is a 51 page PDF on how to fill out the RPA. Okay? All of that stuff will be available on the training site. Um, Stacy and I just met about this earlier today um, under the market data. For far too long, I have been telling you guys, hey, I just did a big report, my charts and graphs I love so much, and I tell you we're going to post it on the website, and we don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're going to. Right, Stacy? Yes. We're going to. <laughs> all right? So, you want the CRMLS data? You come here, it's all going to be, we're going to name it and label it a little bit different so it's a little bit easier to see. So you'll be able to go and pull the specific report, look familiar, all that sort of stuff that I've been showing you guys for as long as you can remember. Um, this is the report from September of, 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 of 2013. So all of those reports, matter of fact, tomorrow, I don't know, are we going to be on track, you think? Okay, tomorrow, we've got our sales meeting. Hold, us, hold me accountable here. We're going to pull up some January 2014 reports during the sales meeting. When I pull those reports up, I'm going to pull them up from here. And you guys will literally be able to pull them up right then and there in the sales meeting. You won't have to hear me say, oh, by the way, sometime next week they're going to be on the portal. Well, no, they're not. They're going to be on the portal when we pull them up. So if you don't, can we call you out? Call me out. <laughs> <laughs> call me out. No pressure, Stacy. No pressure. <laughs> really Wait, is it calling you out or calling Stacy? Well, you call me out, I'm calling you out. <laughs> so at any rate, um, you know, it's um, it's frankly, it's one of the things that Stacy and I are working on. I mean, I, you know, I, 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 it pains me to say it, but it's true. Sometimes I overcommit sit back and say, yeah, we're going to do this, and I turn by me and say, hey, help me do this, and then, you know, and we don't put a plan in place to get it done. So, at any, we're going to get all those sort of things on there, and um, marketing pieces. Ingrid started building this already. I'm kind of excited about this. It's not quite ready for prime time, but, um, you know, you want to do an open house this weekend. You need some basic marketing materials. You go to marketing, you click on open house. Ingrid has pulled off um, some documents that are open house related. Okay, so you don't have to go through and recreate the wheel. Yeah, and again, a lot of this may sound very reminiscent to Cobalt Banker Works. Well, it is reminiscent to Cobalt Banker Works. We're just trying to get it in an area where you might want to find it. Well, so, and honestly, Cobalt Banker Works, every time I go look for something, it's hard I to can't find. find it. Well, <laughs> and you know what? And, and, and I understand why that happens is because it's, it's too big. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take what we hope, and hopefully we don't have the same problem. So if you want to find some open house stuff, Mm -hmm. When we start populating this, this file cabinet, are we going to make it easy enough for you to, oh, well, you have to look under marketing open house. Oh, see, I didn't know that. Okay. Um, or how do I search or what can I search back, which is very interesting. Let's see if we can find this. She put a thing in here for Marina Valley Unified School Districts, whatever. I don't even know what this is. This is probably not the best place for that to be because... Marketing open house. What is this? Now maybe this is important. It, it talks about <coughs> it's the areas and what's No, I know what it is, but <laughs> but I wouldn't know where to tell you to find that. So I'm going to try something here. I'm going to type in here MVUSD. Hopefully, it's going to filter that down. MVUSD, and it's going to tell me. Please show up. Show that document. It'd be so nice if you did. It's thinking about it. But it's a search contacts. Uh, it does. I know. I'm learning. Because I search schools and nothing has come up. It's interesting that it has search contacts up there. I don't know why it would be under contacts. There's probably a reason for that. Um, and actually, I think you're right because what it was trying to give me, I don't know what it was trying to give me, but it looked like a person. Change view, details, thumbnails. Okay, well, at any rate, we'll have to, oh, maybe this is where I want to search. Let me try this. Um, path how about M B U S D. Might want to hit enter. No, it looks like it's going to go. I think so. I think this is actually going to do what we want it to do. 
and if, I, if I'm not mistaken, everything here is going to disappear except for... Well, <laughs> it, took, it did well, for a it minute. Was, it was at the folder already, huh? Well, it, well, maybe you're right. Maybe that's the challenge. Let me go back. Let me, let me start up here and, and come to the files and try that again. Yeah, custom files. Mm. Mm. Doesn't look like it likes that. Actually, it doesn't even want to let me search over here. Looks like you have to have within that folder. Yeah, within that folder. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll work on that. But but again, it, it, I mean, guys, if you know anything about me, I'll be the first one to point out the flaw in the system. One of the flaws in the system of Cobble Banker Works is potentially a flaw in the system we're going to have here. We're going to have the data here, but you're not going to be able to find it. That will be on fall on our shoulders for you to at least be able to, you know, find it. And then, oh, well, actually, there's another one down here. I think that's probably. browser. Oh, okay, yeah. never mind. Okay, so at any rate. We're gonna, but the, the, the whole idea, obviously, is to get those type of important things. And again, we could go through and rack our brains on what those are. Whatever we are, whatever they are, if you come to me and say, I'd like to get that. Ah, okay, great. Stacy, here, let's make sure we get that loaded. And God forbid, let's try to put it in a place where we can find it. You know, I created this folder down here on short, short sale forms. I think we put all of the CDPE forms on there. We did. Okay, so if you came to me right now and said, hey, I need to, can you help me out with a sample hardship letter? Well, go to the short sale form, <coughs> scroll down here and look for the um, sample hardship letter. You open it up, there it is, there's your PDF, and it gives you a sample hardship letter, something to give you an idea of what you're talking about. So, again, that's under the resource tab, and I think we kind of beat that one to death. Um, it does do a lot more. Um, but for, for now, that's the hour and 32 minute overview. So my, my hope, my goal is, is that, again, even if this was the one thing, you know, not everybody raised their hand, but it sounds like at some point Eric's going to need a copy of the e and or my broker's license. That may be the only reason that Eric would feel the need to go into the system. Okay, well, fair enough. Then, you know, this is where you're going to find it. I did end up finding your uh, the corporate license. Corporate license. Yeah. Well, there you go. Where'd you find it? You just... It's under manager and recruiting. Ah, okay. In this section? Yeah. All right. Well, again, that's probably again, probably not necessarily where we need it to be. That we mm -hmm. may need to have it somewhere up in here where... Legal license. Legal license. Insurance. <laughs> <laughs> right. Stacy, you taking notes? No pressure. No pressure. So... At any rate, uh, well, so this is a perfect example. Matter of fact, I think um, I think Shirley came up to me earlier today and had a W nine. You asked me, is that the most right. up to date W nine? To be honest with you, I don't know if it's the most up to date W nine or not. It was correct. Okay. But um, is it TNC's you know, name though? Because I just recently asked Stacy to send that for a new home town and country. Yeah. I don't know. We're, well, let's see what this one says. Keep in mind. We're not Cobo Banker Pioneer or Cobo Banker. Yeah, what good is that? that? <laughs> it's a W9 Blank. Well, we are in the recruiting well, part. And, and you know what? And that was, well, and that might be designed for the individual. But our mm -hmm. W9, frankly, should say Pioneer Real Estate Inc., with a DBA, Cobo Banker Town and Country. Um, but again, we, obviously, we have some work to do. Um, okay. Um, anybody got any? Thoughts, questions, criticisms, critiques, love it, hate it. Yeah. Oh. I think Ingrid was putting some things into like open house. Oh, she has. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Well, the open house that we were just doing through <coughs> letter marketing. Oh, um, under open house. Uh -huh. um, she's got a variety of things. Again, some of the stuff didn't seem to. That was sort of that we were hung up with that. Oh. There's a bunch of stuff in here for open houses. The charity thing we were talking about, which, by the way, um, there should be a link. That's another thing. There should be a link to the charity websites. Um, so, yeah, here's an open house. Here's an edible version of a PDF, which, by the way, I'll say this again because I always get this. Lance, I got the PDF version. It says it's an editable version, but I can't edit it. And the reason you can't edit it, guys, is you have to buy the full version of Adobe Acrobat. $109. $109. Um, I don't know why this isn't pulling up. But anyway, buy the full version of Adobe Acrobat, then you can edit it. If you just pull it up in, in Adobe Viewer, then you can't edit it. For some reason, that's not pulling up in the show. 
Um, the charities, I think she's just got some basic flyers in here. So if you have an interest in, in donating to Wounded Warriors or Make-A-Wish, they got the flyers in here. But we're also going to create links totally off the topic. We'll talk about this in the sales meeting tomorrow. But what we're going to do from now on with, there's not everybody's doing, we've got a few, not, not, there's a few people that are participating <coughs> in this. But you close an escrow and you say, hey, I want to give you know, $10 to Make-A-Wish or whatever it happens to be. What we were doing last year, we were just kind of banking that 10 bucks and just kind of saving it up and, and we were going to do a big thing. We decided we're not going to do that anymore. Now we actually have a link, which is on our website, a good segue and a good way to kind of end our class. Um, by the way, all of our, all of our um, old websites are still good. So if you do like CB Marino Valley, CB DC, Pioneer Real Estate, CB PLA, they're all good. But now what we're going to do for our charities, you close an escrow, and you've said, hey, we're going to donate. Okay. <laughs> you want to donate um, um, $10 of your commission to Make-A-Wish. We're actually going to go there for you. You're going to get your commission statement, and you're going to say, hey, I've agreed to donate $10 to Make-A-Wish. The county department was going to go there click the donate now doll thing, put 10 bucks and basically send them your $10 and then we'll get to see how we go. You know, so far we've done great. Okay. Um, but that's the whole thing that we're going to do now with the, um, with the main. We've got our own little nice little page. Um, I think Ingrid set this up, I think. Um, so we need to get a link to this page also on our office page. So if somebody just was feeling super generous today and said, hey, I'd like to give 50 bucks to the Wounded Warrior, then you come down here and you click and you donate 50 bucks to the Wounded Warrior, and you do it on your own. You just put in your name or you choose to remain anonymous or you want to do it. So at any rate, it's going, ah, okay, we seem to be um, going again. Um, I had a question on the... Real quick, while I'm thinking of it, if you see your name and you don't see a photo, number one, it's because you don't have a photo up here. But it's also, you've got to be careful because you very well probably don't have a photo on cobalbanker.com yet. Not true. Not true? I know yeah, for a fact a I have a photo, photo on cobalbanker.com. I said you may not have a oh, photo. Oh, may. <laughs> um, so, and, and if you don't have a photo here, then we just need to update one. And obviously it's got little birthday <clears throat> things. Um, what you got, Debbie? Some of them are featured listings. How do we get our listings to be featured? I don't know. We need to kind of figure that out. Um, I don't know what the I don't know what the system is to um, um, why that listing showed up or why it didn't feature listing in San Jacinto for eighty five. Need to I need to figure that. I don't know if that's something that you guys can do. Um, or how exactly that's or does it just take them all? Well, then like Maritza, for example, I mean, we just, did, she's scrolled through here like two times just oh, in no, the last yeah. 30 seconds. I don't know why, why did she show up twice? Um, and I think this just showed up. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, my previous experience with the scroll bar is it literally would scroll through every single agent in the entire office before it did a repeat. Maybe it's just doing the month. It's possible. We got to figure that out. Like I say, we're still learning. Um, again, there's words again for the third. But yeah, well, maybe you're right. Maybe birthdays. That's probably right. If your birthday is this month, then if you're going to see yourself a little bit more, this is an open but that's house. That's an upcoming one. So upcoming mm -hmm. open houses are going to scroll through. Maybe see, I think each of us are seeing different things though. Cause like Ingrid's just came up. Her birthday's in the night of July. But, well, if you notice the one that there was another one that just popped up that had a birthday in January. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe those kind of just randomly filter in, and then the February birthdays mm -hmm. pop up a little more often. Because this is actually Maritza again with a different banner, a different mm -hmm. birthday. It's a, it's a, Maritza is really popular. Yeah. 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 Well, but again, but but again, maybe that's kind of cool, because if if your birthday is this month, you, people are you're gonna almost got a really good chance to say, hey, it's. Did you Somebody get it? Knows. It's Maritza's birthday this month. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody um, knows. So, you know, we'll There's see. a different it's one. Still, I want my list. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, I don't know what the, what the algorithm is to get that. There she is again. 
Goodness gracious, she's getting a lot of that. And I'm seeing Vincent's a lot. Right. Okay. Well, and Carmen's new. Um, she's in March. Okay. Yeah, that, 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 that's in March or May. 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 Yeah. May. Yeah. Anyhow. Oh, and then I guess, and, and finally, if you guys don't have a home tab, mm -hmm. um, you can create your own tab. So what we just showed you was on the Office tab, which just looks very similar to the Office tab. Maybe what I want you to see isn't necessarily what you want to see. You'd like to, what's more important to you is these things. Well, you could just take off the special days and take off the office news, and the only thing you might really want to focus on is what the office events are. That's fine. You can customize your own. In other words, you don't necessarily have to see what I want you to see. Oops. You don't necessarily have to have your default view of what this is. You can create your own home tab and, and customize it all you want. <coughs> okay, any other questions? Otherwise, uh -oh. I might actually do a class that's less than two hours long. No, we can't let that happen, you oh. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good to go? Good to go. All right, guys. Thanks, Don't forget the sales meeting tomorrow. Tomorrow, Lance. Thank you. Okay, guys.